All right, so we're back at it again. Uh, another SDI video, we're on the home stretch. If you've been keeping up with my videos, you probably know that um, the Air 10 class, which I've been in for uh, about four weeks now, five weeks, uh, we finished the, the Air 10 build, or technically it's an LR308 if you wanna get technical. Now for this video, I really just wanna go over some like final uh, some final measurements, little little quality checks, function checks, and stuff like that. Um, a, lot of, a lot of old school stuff, like flashback from earlier classes. So I'm not gonna talk your guys' ears off, I'm just gonna get right to it. Now, first things first, if you ever work space, you wanna make sure there's no ammunition, nothing live. It's kinda tricky for me, I'm kinda limited on space. I do my reloading at the same place I do all my gunsmithing. So my solution is anything that's live goes up top, and then the actual like assembled ammunition stays in that corner, and then my tools are all waist height, so. That's my method of preventing accidents, negligent discharges from happening and whatnot. So you just always want to be safe. In addition to workspace safety, or pretty much any time you handle a firearm without intent to actually fire it, is uh, clearing the firearm. I've kind of failed you guys. I should be doing this at the beginning of every single video, which I'm going to start doing now. Always clearing the firearm. So for this one, I'm just going to lock it back, just to make things easy. And then you want to visually and physically inspect that chamber and make sure nothing's in there. Get a better angle for the camera. Oh yeah, you should always check the mag well too, whenever you have it locked back, but you know. So now that this uh, this behemoth of an AR is finished, um, the first thing I want to check is the trigger. So it came with the mil spec trigger. I originally uh, assembled it with the trigger that it came with, which isn't a terrible trigger. It's a mil spec trigger. Uh, these usually run around five and a half to six pounds, uh, like a six pound trigger pull, which is, you know, nothing. it's not terrible. I mean, that's what we train with in the military, all of our CADM rifles, unless, you know, you're at a base where they don't take care of the rifles and the sear gets all worn and corroded and then you looking at like an eight or nine pound. But yeah, these aren't terrible. I have a ton of these sitting around. For this build, I went with a Timony drop-in trigger, the competition trigger, and if you can see it in there, it's got like the blue blue housing and stuff like that. So that one's gonna have a three pound trigger pull, I believe, two and a half to three pounds, that's how they advertise it. Um, it's a single stage, so there's no take up. Let's go ahead and get a feel on that. Check the safe, good to go. And like I said, it's a single stage, so even when it's on safe, there's not gonna be any take up. You're already at the wall, throw it on fire. Nice, it's like glass breaking. That's one of the reasons why I like this trigger so much is I kind of chase after that, you know, that that feeling of like breaking like a thin piece of glass, you know? I'll check the reset. Minimal. Nice. But enough trigger talk, I wanna move on. Now another thing I like to do as soon as I finish my builds is um, kind of like, kind of did some of it already, like a function check, but you gotta do a dry function check, something with an empty mag, and then with something with dummy rounds. So with no, no dummy rounds, no magazine, nothing, we're just gonna make sure it's working right, which we've pretty much already done. We'll do it again. Quadruple check, make sure it's cleared. Cool, 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 nothing in the chamber, nothing in the mag well. And then yeah, we'll just run it, run through it again. So it shouldn't fire on safe. We'll go to fire. Nice glass break. Trigger break, reset the trigger, disengaging from the disconnector, wall, break again. We're gonna try it again, but without holding the trigger this time. Make sure it goes straight to the trigger sear. Nice. And then it shouldn't go to safe unless the hammer's cocked. So we'll go ahead and cock the hammer, throw it on safe, nothing. So that checks out. Now let's try it with some dummy ammunition. I kind of did this briefly in my last video. This is a more focused dummy round operational checkout. Make sure there's no live ammunition in there. And we're gonna go ahead and just load one in. So don't forget to not baby your, your firearms when you're doing this check. Fed one in, you could do a check. Yep, still in there. Nothing on safe. Go to fire. Nice. I'm gonna hold the trigger this time when I eject that round. So <clears throat> when I pull this charging handle back, it'll be executing the extraction and then the ejection. And then when I release it, it'll do the feeding, the caulking and the chambering. Nice ejection. Do the reset. Okay. Nice. And then if I let go, now that checks out. Now the third operational checkout I would do is, like I said, a controlled area, shooting range, outdoor shooting range with you know the proper backstop or whatnot. And some things I'd be looking for since all this checked out, I know I can just load it in a mag and you know trust that factory ammunition, of course, is gonna operate well in this firearm. But in a live fire check, you're gonna be looking for more stuff. First thing I do is load a single round in, in the magazine like so. 
if I was at the range, this would be a live, live round. Just one like that and shoot it and make sure the bolt locks back. That's the first thing I would check for. Make sure it's properly gassed. And then I do the same thing, but maybe with like two rounds in the, in the magazine, just to make sure they cycle right and locks back after the second one's shot. This build did come with an, an adjustable gas block. Um, I also bought my own muzzle device that would allow me to stick my suppressor on it. It is a dead air chemo. 30 cal muzzle brake and then next thing i check for is uh the brass itself you know um after after i fire a few rounds i check the brass look for any bulging on the brass any any marring on, on the rim or the, the head stamp of the casing looking for ejector uh, problems with the bolt face and the ejector and the extractor make sure those are working right i've already taken this rifle to the range and did those checks and it checks out good so this thing is in good working operational order so yeah that's that's really 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 good to see it was uh properly gassed right off the rip so i'm assuming the gas block that they sent was already ported fully um i didn't do any adjusting yet because i don't want to adjust the gas until i test my own reloads in it because i don't i hardly ever shoot factory ammunition i only use factory ammunition unless it's a brand new build so but yeah so we'll be tuning it uh maybe in a future video i might i might make a video for that so stay tuned for that now i want to pretend that uh i haven't even like i want to pretend that i just built this and i haven't even fired it yet so another thing i i'm going to start doing now that i know that i should do it is uh, measuring the barrel length after it's built to measure the barrel length you can use uh one of these or just any long cleaning rod you have pull this guy out you'll want to vice your your firearm for this so it'll just make everything a whole lot easier Now to do this test, you want to make sure that your bolt is sent all the way forward and locked and everything. Um, because what you're doing is you're going to take that straightening rod and you're going to throw it in the muzzle end and it's going to bottom out on the bolt face and you're going to be taking your measurement like that. So this one's pretty easy. Now, because this muzzle device is fixed to this barrel, actually it's not pin welded. So technically this is removable. So normally you'd have to take this off and then do the measurement from the crown of the barrel. But uh, this thing is perfectly timed and I spent pretty good time trying to get that right. So I don't want to, I don't have another one of these crush washers. So I don't want to have to go through all that again. So we're just going to measure it from the muzzle device just for the sake of the video. So just imagine that this is actually pin welded to the barrel. First thing you're gonna do is you wanna take something, if you don't have like a brass tip on whatever cleaning rod you're using, you'd wanna use a brass loophole. Just make sure you're using brass because you don't wanna mar anything up in, inside the barrel or on your bolt face. So I'm actually gonna be using an eyelet for mine just to reduce the chance of, you know, the edge of this sitting on the extractor or the ejector. I don't wanna get a false reading. So I'm just gonna go ahead and feed that all the way in. Contact the bolt face, maybe do a little twisty twist, make sure you're not on the ejector or anything. And then you'll put a piece of tape right there. You're just going to measure from the tip of this all the way to the tape. And we're looking at 20 and a quarter. Now we learned in our uh, lecture this class, or this week actually, that uh, typically manufacturers will actually add that extra quarter inch just to be in the safe side from the ATF. Kind of funny because I could totally see the ATF going up to something that's right at 16 inches, but finding a way to shave off like, like an eighth of an inch or something just to screw somebody over. So yeah, there's no way they can mistake a whole quarter inch of length. So yeah. Next thing I want to do is uh, demonstrate how to measure the twist rate inside your barrel. They're typically going to be how many inches you have to go before you get a full rotation on the rifling. Now, I actually don't remember what the twist rate is on this, but we're about to find out. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use something on the tip that's going to grab the rifling really well and force the rod to spin with the rifling. It also helps to have a cleaning rod it spins independently from its handle. So I'm like, I can hold the rod still and spin the handle on its own. So for this video, I'm going to be swapping this eyelet out with a 30 cal jag from this kit, which I also got from school. Hint, hint, I'm just giving you guys reasons to enroll with STI, but this should do. So I'm going to throw a cleaning patch on this, a lubed cleaning patch at that, uh, because that's going to grab the rifling really well and force the rod to spin. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put a piece of tape on here. Um, you wanna give it some length, so I wanna give it about 10 inches. Probably put it like right here. Now, essentially, you're gonna keep this tape at the 12 o'clock position. That way you can see it do one full rotation as I'm pushing the jag down the barrel. Once it makes that full rotation, we'll mark where, uh, how far it had to travel to make that rotation, and then we'll measure that. So we're still at the 12 o'clock here. I'm gonna push it in until it engages with the rifling with the tape still at the 12 o'clock. All right, we're engaged with the rifling now. Tape is still at 12 o'clock. I'm gonna mark it right here. And then once the tape gets back to the 12 o'clock position right there, we'll make another marking. I'm gonna go ahead and push the cloth all the way through. Now we have our two markings. 
that's where we started that's where we engaged with the rifling you go down a little bit this is where we achieved a full rotation and we're going to measure the distance between these two Got that there a little bit of margin for error but it looks like it's going to be a 1 and 11 so every 11 inches you get a full rotation of rifling so that's uh measuring measuring your twist rate all right so now <clears throat> i want to talk about headspace now first thing you'll want to do before measuring headspace is you'll want to take the extractor at the very least, the extractor out of your bolt, which is what we're going to be doing today. I just realized that I wasn't recording when I took the ejector out, but essentially, you'll sit this bolt right in here just like so. And what that'll allow you to do is to compress the extractor using this knob here. And while it's compressed, you can use a roll pin to punch the roll pin out, and it'll come out of this hole. And then you have all your parts like this. So now we're really just going to reassemble the bolt carrier group with the bolt as it is, without the extractor, or without the ejector, pardon me. Now we can throw the bolt back in. Now this is where the headspace gauges start coming in. Now I do a lot of reloading, which is, comes in handy because now I have this book here. So basically the headspace, you're measuring the distance between the datum line, which is gonna be this line right here, because this shoulder here is where the cartridge is gonna hug the shoulder of the chamber. And you're gonna measure the, the distance between the datum line to the head of the case. Now here, if you look here, it should be 1.634, 1, so 634 thousandths of an inch. Now if you look at these gauges, we have a no-go and a go gauge. Go gauge is going to be 1630, no-go is going to be 1634 as this is the max. We'll start with the go gauge first, and this should lock into the chamber. Nice. Full lock on this. Take it back out. It's going to be the no-go gauge. And you don't want to use too much force, but just a little tap or whatnot. Uh, notice that it does not lock. So normally you do the same test with the bolt out. You would take the bolt on the barrel extension, the gauge on it, and just try to spin it freely with the, see if these lugs spin freely behind the bolt extension lugs, or the barrel extension lugs, sorry. And uh, that's how you do the measurement. But since it's already already assembled, this is the method you could use to check headspace. So yeah, the no-go gauge didn't lock. Now next thing I want to talk about is um, firing pin protrusion. So we'll show you that. I kind of touched on that in a past video but I'll go in depth on it with this one. Now before we start diving into the firing pin protrusion gauge measurement whatever uh, I want to put this ejector back in the bolt so I don't forget that wouldn't be a good day. So this one's pretty simple. All we're going to be doing is measuring how far out the firing pin goes out of the bolt face. Um, right now, this is going to be unlocked position. See how the cam pin is at the 12 o'clock. And uh, if it's not locked, you won't get any protrusion. But if it's sent forward, locked into the barrel extension, like so, you'll get some. Now, we're, all we're going to be doing is making sure that it's protruding the right amount. So this part's not super complicated. Uh, basically, what we're going to do, take this tool, loosen this knob just a tad to where it's not holding that guy in anymore. Set this up like this. Make sure you're going to get a good protrusion. Make sure it's fully locked. We're going to set this end right on the bolt face. And holding this against the bolt face, we'll push this through. It's going to push that top notch through. Make sure you're holding it down to the bolt face, nice and flat. And then tighten this guy. And now what we're going to be doing is measuring the height of of that notch there. How we're gonna do that, take some calibers, measure the bulk of the tool, zero it out, and then open them up and measure the height of that notch, that plunger. We're looking at 54 thousandths of an inch. Write that down for reference. So I had to do a little bit of research to find out what the proper firing pin protrusion would be for the Air 10 308 build. But um, all I really found was a bunch of forums talking about the different you know, tolerances for different bolt action and other, other calibers that use large rifle primers. 54 thousandths falls under all of these. I think the one that stood out that I saw the most of was um, the Bagara bolt action um, receivers. And those are the 55 thousandths to 65 thousandths, which this pretty much falls under there maybe just a hair under based on when i was shooting it the brass looked fine the primers weren't punched through or anything so we're looking good there as well but in the meantime <clears throat> that's all i got for you guys so i'm just gonna throw this guy back together and uh yeah all right so there you have it guys um that's all i got for you guys <clears throat> i don't want to bore you guys anymore so with that being said stay strapped and stay safe